Man, I absolutely hate this damn time of year. Just look at this road. What the hell am I doing dragging a motorcycle down here? It's ridiculous. This is my one of my normal shooting spots for intros, but damn. It's rough at the moment. I mean, the bike's reading what? Two degrees C, and that's the best it's getting today. Absolutely horrendous. So, guys and gals, in today's video, we are going to discuss things like wheelie control, things like ABS, and a lot of other modern rider aids that are supposed to help riders keep control of their bikes, but actually, do they do more harm than good? Yeah, this is going to be interesting, because I know a lot of you guys are quite anti... anti computer intervention when it comes to riding motorcycles. You want as much feeling going through the motorcycle directly to you rather than having to go through some kind of computer or something like that. So yeah, let's see where this journey takes us. And I mean, I'm keeping the bike running just because she really, really struggled to start up today. I mean, she hasn't been out for about a week and yeah, she's struggling, the poor thing. So I'm gonna keep her running, I think, for today's shoot. But anyway, right, let's go. This road is absolutely horrendous. Yeah, it's absolutely awful. I thought, oh yeah, this, this will be a place I haven't been in for a while. I'll go down here and shoot. <laughs> it's just, it's just awful. All right, guys, so. I thought mainly about wheelie control for today's video, mainly because, well, I kind of thought to myself, like, if you want the riders to be fully in control of their motorcycles, then why would you have something like wheelie control? Is it, you know, is, is it really something that is actually helpful? Or is it something that is giving the riders a bit too much confidence, if you know what I mean, in their own abilities? Now, me personally, I, I'm, I haven't got the bollocks to put my motorcycles up to a wheelie control test but that's something I'm, I'm trying to pluck up the courage to do maybe maybe in the summer spring slash summer I'll have a I'll have a look see how good Kawasaki's re wheelie control really is but I mean as I was kind of thinking about the topic it, you, you, there's a lot more features actually that you could kind of argue falls under that same bracket where they might not actually be, be that helpful and where you want riders to learn adapt and be able to control the motorcycles for themselves how much intervention are these features actually having in the riders own abilities or own skill in controlling the bike like I mean for example what if a rider gets on a modern motorcycle they absolutely blast it with Kawasaki's traction control on, which is also the wheelie control. The wheelie control saves them from flipping the bike over, but then, and they, and they get confident. They get confident in, you know, the bike actually safeguarding their, their silly behavior. But then all of a sudden they get on a motorcycle that is pre 2000s, mid 2000s, and then they do the exact same thing and then they flip the bike around the other way. I would actually prefer to be in that position of, well, kind of pretending that I don't have any wheelie control. That's the attitude that I've always had on any motorcycle that I've ever ridden is that none of these rider aids, and I think this is the attitude that I think most riders should have if you don't, most rider aids, if not all rider aids, are not going to help you. They are not going to help you, and if you do something stupid like that, then well, you have to suffer the consequences of a <laughs> of a wrecked bike, so to speak. But I mean, in these conditions right now, there's absolutely no way that the bike's going to have enough traction to pull any kind of wheelie anyway. The roads are icy, they're muddy, they're grimy, absolutely just disgusting weather conditions today for riding a motorcycle. <laughs> but I'm putting myself through it because the show must go on <laughs> I don't know where that came from sorry <laughs> but yeah things like ABS I think are, are, are a real help and I mean 
just rider aids in general are mostly a positive thing, are mostly a good thing in my mind. And I prefer to have those safety nets there anyway, just in case something happens like I accidentally go too hard on the accelerator or something, or even riders that are fairly new to the motorcycle that they're riding and they're trying to feel it out a little bit. Maybe they're trying to push its boundaries and they give it a bit too much and the rider aids actually end up saving them. But Whatever you do guys, never ever rely on the rider aids, okay? Always rely on your own skill, your own ability. If you think you're gonna flip a bike over, then maybe go a little bit easier on the gas, go a little bit easier on the clutch, and maybe just get to know the bike a little bit more and get to know your own limits, rather than allowing the bike to set them for you, if you know what I mean. It's quite interesting actually, because this is one thing that I almost always do, apart from maybe this time of year, is I turn off traction control. I turn them off, I turn it off on the ZZR here, I also have a habit of turning it off on my ZH2 and I don't know, I, I just feel like I have a bit more control over the bike rather than the bike dictating what I can and can't do on it. Now even though I, I'm not very aggressive whatsoever when it comes to riding the bikes, I mean that's why a lot of the time whenever I'm pulling back that throttle I'm getting a thrill out of it because I leave that in reserve for when I really want to have a good time. But I, I always try to restrain myself as much as possible. <laughs> We've got another joker behind us that thinks that riding, driving close to a motorcycle is a good thing. <laughs> well, we'll see. But yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments there, guys and gals, about these rider aids and how you treat them. Do you treat them with pinch of salt you know are you skeptical of them or do you use them on a regular basis in the sense that you actually push the bike to its limits to the point where the computers and the rider aids actually have to get involved uh, or intervene in what you're doing <laughs> like i've seen i've seen uh, videos of the zh2 before where they're pulling wheelies because the zh2 actually allows you to pull wheelies even with wheelie control on but you can tell that the wheelie control is cutting power to the rear wheel if the wheelie gets a bit too high for for what the computer thinks is safe, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting, guys. For me, it's, it's, it's a very interesting topic. Like, how much intervention do we want motorcycles to have in our riding abilities? I think it's a moral debate as well as a practical debate because, like I was trying to, like I was trying to say earlier, I prefer the riders to have more skill than reliance on rider aids, if you know what I mean. But I can, I understand why these rider aids are also important and why these brands feel like rider aids are important. There you go, one, one degree and we're in the hills. Oh, this is awful, guys, this is awful. I didn't want to go on roads like this today because I thought, well, obviously in the hills it's going to be colder and wetter and more miserable than urban streets, but well, I am stupid. <laughs> I am simple. <laughs> but, yeah. Very, very interesting topic for me, guys. And I actually think that it's probably going to go more in the direction of rider aids, more rider aids, more tech, more stuff to intervene with the riding experience. Now, whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing, you guys definitely hash it out in the comments down below because there's going to be a lot of differing opinions on this. In some ways, for me, I think it's a positive thing, but then in other ways, you know, I don't want it to take away from the riding experience. I don't want it to take away from the rider's ability to control the bike. I'm sorry if I've repeated myself there. I can't remember exactly what I've said earlier on in this video as a lot of this is off the cuff kind of thing. I, I usually try and think of or memorize some talking points in these vlogs, but <laughs> I can never remember what I've said or what I haven't said. And I'm gonna try and keep this video nice and short today, guys, just to try and handle this cold as, as best as I can. I'm gonna try shooting one more video whilst I am out today. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'm probably gonna to have to have a break at some point uh, on this little ride here. Yeah, guys and gals, I don't know, man. This is a real tough one for me, a real tough one. To be honest, I prefer to have less rider aids. I prefer to have more control of the bike that I'm actually riding and 
knowing that my actions have consequences. That's how people learn. People learn by making mistakes. And if your bike is protecting you from making those mistakes, well, do you learn the lessons? It's a big question mark. And I mean, I'm a rider that started riding without any rider aids, you know, all the motorcycles that were available to me back then are like nowhere near what you can get now in terms of rider raids on most mod motorcycles. I think the most that I had was ABS. Didn't have traction control, didn't have wheelie control, didn't have anything like that. So it was all down to me. It was all down to me and my ability to control the bike. And I, you know, and that experience to me has definitely made me far more considerate and far more respectful of massive motorcycles like the ZZR here that are very, very, that can be difficult to tame if you don't know what you're doing, yeah? Just knowing how much throttle to use, knowing how much clutch to use, knowing how much braking force to use on these big kind of kinds of bikes, especially if you're going a little bit faster than you normally do, then it really does kind of make you more aware of the bikes that you're riding, you know, more aware of their potential, more aware of the dangers that they can that they can have if you are not used to them or if you are using the safety nets that a lot of these motorcycles have nowadays. So, yeah, it's a very, like I said earlier, it's a very, very interesting topic. And definitely let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Do you guys prefer riding older motorcycles simply for that reason that there isn't a computer getting in the way in a lot of the actions that you take and a lot of the throttle that you apply? Yeah, definitely let me know what you think in, in the comment section below, guys. But thank you ever so much for watching today's video. Make sure to leave a like. Make sure to hit subscribe. Anyone that's new to the channel, welcome. I hope you are doing well. And definitely let me know what you guys are up to. Any new viewers out there, what bikes you ride, where you are in the world, and how you're finding it. And uh, just, to, just to give you guys just a little bit of a heads up, because of the weather that we're having at the moment, it's very, very difficult for me to actually find times to find to get out and ride at the moment to actually get out and shoot these vlogs so we might have some videos coming out in the near future that are filmed in our little live show studio that we've got at home and it's I, i'm hoping to keep them to a very similar format to this in the sense that they're going to be off the cuff they're going to be talking they're going to have talking points but they're going to be more of a initial reaction or kind of like my initial thoughts on a particular topic so I mean one of the videos that I have lined up to shoot is why we talk about the ZZR 1400 so much why we talk about the ZX14 so much on this channel and so if that's a video that you're interested in watching then definitely hit subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss it but like I said it's more than likely going to be in our little studio and I'm going to splice in videos of me filter of me riding anyway so you do get a little bit of this kind of moto vlog experience but yeah it's just <laughs> it's just certain times of year guys like right now it's getting just too dangerous for me to film but anyway thank you so much again for watching thank you for joining me on today's ride i hope it hasn't been too miserable for you and we'll catch you on the next one